hi there in this video we are going to discuss about systemic lupus uh, so in uh, robin it is uh, written quite extensive you can see here it is uh, ranging about uh, 10 pages and i have tried to summarize it i hope you will like it so let's move on okay uh, so let's begin with summarization here so what is systemic lupus systemic lupus erythematosus is basically an autoimmune disease which affects multiple system and multiple organs of the body okay uh, so common manifestation of this disease include uh, butterfly rash cirrhositis cirrhositis include uh, pyrola pyrolitis and endocard uh, pericarditis and pleural fume can also be there pericardial fume can also be there oral cells arthritis and uh, inner arthritis in sle there is a reduced you can say a little deformity as compared to rheumatoid arthritis photosensitivity and uh, there can be involvement of blood in, uh, leading to cytopenias for example there can be decrease in rbc count decrease in wbc count um, and decrease in platelet count so on there can be renal disease uh, leading to the uh, glomerulopathies as well as uh, you can say there can be nephrotic syndrome and there is uh, you can say renal involvement is quite extensive uh, in uh, long standing cases of uh, lupus and there can be ANA antibodies, anti-nuclear antibodies, there are immunological disorders uh, due to which uh, you can say immune complexity deposit in different body tissues and there can be neurological manifestations and uh, there is macular rash or there can be discoid rash. So these are different symptoms that we can uh, make a mnemonic here to uh, remember these are uh, symptoms of the uh, systemic lupus and this mnemonic is basically uh, SOAP, this comes here. So SOAP stands for SOAP here and then B R A I N brain SOAP brain and then M D macular and M D so S for cirrhositis O for oral ulcer A for arthritis P for photosensitivity and um, B for blood R for renal disease A for ANA I for immunologic disorder N for neurological disorder and M D for macular or discoid rash so these were the different symptoms of systemic lupus so what is the pathogenesis of this disease so this disease basically arises or any autoimmune disease basically arises from the breakdown of the uh, self tolerance mechanism there can be a uh, breakdown of central tolerance or peripheral tolerance which leads to the production of auto reactive uh, t cells or production of auto antibodies so what are different factors uh, which lead to the uh, development of systemic lupus it has strong family history okay uh, if a person has sle there are uh, greater chances that his offspring can also have sle okay it has strong uh, family history positive family history moreover genes hla dr2 hla dr3 uh, presence of these genes in genome also increase the susceptibility to sle moreover if there is a deficiency of classical complement proteins uh, there can also be increased chances of sle because there will be decreased clearance of immune complexes we can uh, we will discuss here how this factor contributes to development of sle and uv light exposure also increases the risk of development of sle that's why uh, in, L, in an sle patient if he is uh, exposed to sunlight or UV rays, uh, he experiences flares of the disease. Moreover, certain drugs, for example, herdelazine, procainamide, isoniazid, uh, these drugs also produce uh, SLE like symptoms as a side effects. So, how this disease is occurring basically? One thing is loss of tolerance, and other thing is uh, what happens UV rays, ultraviolet rays, and other toxic uh, agents uh, they promote the apoptosis of the cell. And when there is decrease or deficiency of classical complement proteins, uh, there is decreased clearance of this apoptotic material. When there is apoptosis due to toxic agent, uh, there is generation of nuclear antigen. And these nuclear antigen should be cleared. They should be uh, phagocyte. Uh, they should be removed by phagocytes. However, when there is defective clearance of these antigen, what happens? Uh, these uh, antigen can trigger the production of autoantibodies in a patient in which uh, self tolerance is compromised. Okay. So there is UV light or other toxic uh, agent mediated uh, cell injury which leads to the uh, exposure of the nuclear antigen. These nuclear antigen are uh, not cleared properly and uh, due to loss of self tolerance they lead to the production of autoantibodies and uh, what happens these autoantibodies further stimulate B cells and uh, dendritic cells and they enhance the immune response and more and more autoantibodies are produced and immune response become extensive and this immune response then uh, lead to the uh, damage to body tissues. 
okay so when auto antibodies are formed uh, these auto antibodies bind to their respective antigen and form antigen antibody complex and this antigen antibody complex get deposited into the multiple tissues of the body which leads to the systemic manifestation of disease of the disease so most of the systemic lesion of the disease are due to type 3 hypersensitivity because they are mediated by immune complex or antigen antibody complex however the manifestation which arise in blood uh, which includes cytopenias uh, there is decrease in rbc count decrease in wbc count decrease in platelet count and uh, uh, these is, there is increased phagocytosis of these cells this is basically due to type 2 hypersensitivity what happens auto antibodies bind to their surfaces and increase the phagocytosis of these cells and this is type 2 hypersensitivity so this disease is mixture of type 2 and type 3 hypersensitivity however type 3 response is dominant response okay so systemic lesion are due to type 3 while uh, cytopenias or blood uh, involvement of um, blood cells is due to type 2 uh, hypersensitivity moreover there can also be production of antiphospholipid antibody uh, antibodies which lead to the manifestation of antiphospholipid antibody syndrome which include repeated miscarriages uh, um, and prothrombotic state as well as uh, due to production of these antiphospholipid antibodies there is also false cyclist test uh, in uh, SLE. Moreover, neuropsychiatric symptoms can also arise, and these neuropsychiatric symptoms uh, arise because uh, the antibodies may cross the blood-brain barrier and uh, they can produce these symptoms. Moreover, uh, in SLE, there is the obstruction or occlusion of the small blood vessels in the brain due to which these neuropsychiatric symptoms arise. So, this was basically uh, different factors which are responsible for the SLE, and this was the way how SLE uh, developed and how it causes the tissue injury okay so uh, what is the uh, diagnostic criteria of sle first sle is uh, basically can be you can say uh, you can move on to diagnosis by observing the symptom of the patient then there are certain lab tests which include anti-nuclear antibody test uh, these nas are not specific but they are uh, mostly positive in sle moreover anti double standard dna antibodies and the sm antibodies which are uh, anti sm antibodies are against small nuclear ribonucleoprotein particles and anti phospholipid antibodies which include anti cardiolipin antibody and anti b2 uh, glycoprotein antibody these antibody tests are positive can positive in SLE. So, uh, ANA test, anti double standard DNA antibody test, anti SM antibody test, and anti phospholipid antibody test help to uh, diagnose the SLE. Okay, so uh, the commonest cause of death in SLE patient is renal failure because kidney involvement is quite prominent in SLE and second most common cause is coronary artery disease and coronary artery disease is quite common in patient who are treated with corticosteroid for long term. So these are uh, two major causes of death in SLE patients and survivor 5 year survival rate in SLE patient is about in 90% cases and 10 year survival rate is in 80% cases. So this was basically a general overview of the disease. So what is the morphology of disease? Uh, this disease is characterized by acute necrotizing vasculitis. And there are vascular lesion in this disease, and uh, there is also a kidney lesion in which uh, immune complexes or antigen antibody complexes deposit in glomerulus. Okay, about 50% of the patients show significant renal disease. This renal disease can lead to even ultimate uh, renal failure. You can say. So this uh, renal involvement shows six basic patterns. One is minimum mesangial lupus nephritis in which uh, there is deposition of antigen antibody complexes in mesangial tissue. Mesangial tissue is the sporting tissue of glomerulus. It surrounds the glomerular capillaries and uh, gives them support here. So antigen antibody complexes are deposited in mesangial tissue. However, there is no proliferation of mesangial tissue and there is no involvement of the glomerular capillaries in this stage. However, this stage is rare. This stage is uh, least commonly found. Okay. Uh, in next stage, mesangial proliferation occur and uh, mesangial tissue start proliferating, and uh, there is again no involvement of the glomerulus. In the next stage, our third stage, which is focal lupus nephritis, uh, less than 50% of glomerular capillaries also get involved. Okay. So what happens? There is swelling of capillaries, and there is a proliferation of endothelial cells, and uh, there is capillary necrosis. At this stage, at this stage, uh, the symptoms of kidney involvement appear, which include proteinuria, hematuria, and acute renal insufficiency. Red cell cast appear in urine. So, in this stage, there is less than 50% involvement of glomerular capillaries, and it, the symptom of renal insufficiency start appearing. Next stage is diffuse lupus nephritis. It is most common. 
it is most common uh, pattern of kidney involvement in uh, lupus and uh, what happens in this stage there is circumferential thickening of the capillary wall and uh, there is a, 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 this circumferential thickening of capillary wall producing a wild loop structure or wild loop appearance of microscopy and there are again same symptom proteinuria, hematuria, cutaneal insufficiency, red cell cost in urine and there can be scarring of the scarring of the glomeruli and so on and in the next stage is uh, this is most common diffuse leukosamphitis is most common in SLE patient next is membranous leukosamphitis which is more advanced stage in this stage capillary wall also thickened basement membrane also thickened and the symptoms of renal insufficiency become more and more pronounced and the last stage is advanced echoing leukosamphitis in which uh, kidney function is severely severely compromised and um, you can say this is a patient is moving towards end stage kidney disease so these are six different patterns of the kidney involvement which appear in uh, Patient. Uh, the rare, the most rare uh, is minimum is angel lupus nephritis and most common is diffuse lupus nephritis. Okay, and what are the other manifestations or other uh, morphological patterns? Immune complex can also deposit in kidney interstitium and B cell follicles are also found in kidney interstitium which are sorts of autoantibodies and in skin there is a manifestation of butterfly or discoid rash there can be edema, urticaria or ulceration of the skin and in joints synovitis is present there is inflammation of synovial membrane however uh, in, in contrast to rheumatoid arthritis joint deformity is little in SLE in CNS uh, non-inflammatory occlusion occurs of small blood vessels due to which neuropsychiatric symptoms arise and in a CVS cardiovascular system myocarditis is present there is valvular endocarditis coronary artery disease is present pericardial effusion can occur and pericarditis can occur uh, so these are basically uh, pericarditis is basically uh, either here we study serocytis or inflammation of serosal membrane and in lungs there can be pleuritis which is also serocytis inflammation of serous membrane and there can be pleural effusion pulmonary hypertension chronic interstitial fibrosis subplane can also be enlarged and there is a capsular thickening of subplane and this subplenic lesion can are, are called onion skin lesion and uh, bone marrow can show LE bodies uh, lupus erythematosus bodies which are basically a term which is used to uh, describe you can say damaged cells uh, in response to SLE or autoimmune response lymph nodes can also become enlarged uh, due to proliferation of the uh, B cell follicles and uh, there can be necrotizing lymphadenitis so uh, almost all the major uh, system of the body are getting in, uh, involved in systemic lupus there are two other variables of the uh, lupus which is one is chronic discoid lupus erythematos and other is acute cutaneous lupus so in chronic discoid lupus uh, skin manifestation of SLD are present on scalp and face however systemic manifestation are rare okay and uh, ANA tests are positive but anti double standard DNA test can be negative here and in this disease in 5 to 10 percent patient it can progress to SLE uh, in many years in, in a long course of disease you can say so it is basically there is involvement of skin here and skin is also involvement of scalp and face however in long run in long run it can turn into SLE it can turn into SLE Next is subacute cutaneous lupus and it is intermediate between SLE and discoid lupus. So in this case uh, there are skin manifestation like chronic discoid lupus however skin manifestation are more extensive in that involve more body parts and there are also mild systemic symptoms here. Mild systemic symptoms were not present in chronic discoid lupus however in subacute cutaneous lupus systemic mild systemic symptoms are present. Then there can be a drug induced lupus and drug induced lupus can be due to isoniazid, hydralazine, prokenam, IOD, pencilamine or anti-TNF therapy and uh, these uh, drug induced lupus symptoms disappear when uh, the use of drug is discontinued. So it was all about the SLE. Thank you.